Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, the Silver Fox. For Nicola Sturgeon, the COVID inquiry has been a truly terrible thing. It has shone a light upon her. The mask has slipped and the curtain has been pulled back and revealing what is inside. And for many, it is just a writhing mass of hate and bigotry and jealousy and power, megalomania, sociopathy and a callous disregard for humanity. She has been shown in her true light. People are now realising that many of them have been duped into thinking that she was some kind of human being when it's all emerging that that's the very last thing she was. She was an insect, a lizard, something crawling and abasing, something that you would scrape off your boot. Her regards for her fellow human beings were as nothing. It was all to do with self-aggrandizement, megalomania and a lust for power over everything. A woman with joyless, empty life, filling it just with the power that she could gain from others. Her popularity has crashed and burned and it's a good thing that it has. The sheen has come off and all the affection and all the protection that was afforded to her by her previous coterie of hangers-on and lickspittles is dissolving and soon they will abandon her and people will start pointing the blame at her. It will be she who's carrying the can. Let's take a look. Scottish voters no longer trust Nicola Sturgeon as a new poll shows the public has seen through her. She has been revealed for what she is, an absolute monster. And the more that comes out, the more people will see it. And this is one of the reasons why not only is her popularity plummeting, but that of the SNP, because they were all abasing themselves to her. They were all saying, oh, yes, Nicola, fawning adoration, fawning, licking, kissing the ring, bending the knee, doing as she wanted. She was setting herself up to have an independent Scotland and then announcing herself as Queen Nick. And it's all come crashing down because reality has bitten hard. Scottish Labour leader Anna Sawar is now the most trusted politician in Scotland, with the former SNP leader dropping 37 points in the trustworthiness scale in just two years. I was surprised she had 37 points to drop. A new poll has found that trust in the nationalist leadership has plummeted, with Scottish Labour leader Anna Sawa now the most trusted politician in Scotland. The survey for the Sunday Times saw Nicola Sturgeon ranked at a trust rating of minus 19, a significant drop from her February 21 rating when she scored plus 18. At the time, the former First Minister was being widely praised for her handling of the pandemic this, of course, is before the truth came out and before everyone realised what she was doing and how she was potentially murdering people by the thousand. However, the Covid UK inquiry in Edinburgh has now revealed she and her aides used the outbreak of a deadly virus to drive up support for independence and deliberately stoke political grievances with the UK government because that was more important, of course, than the health and safety of the people. They can die. That is all part of the plan. And it's a price that she was worth paying. She also failed to submit any WhatsApp messages as a delete culture at the highest levels has also been exposed. And of course, we did the story earlier that uh, now the police are investigating uh, what is potentially murder, that they will definitely be very, very interested in all the things she's deleted because it won't just be that particular crime which should be investigated for. There are bound to be others that come out. Since her sudden decision to step down last March, running for the hills and hoping to God people didn't arrest her, Miss Sturgeon and her husband, the former SNP Chief Executive Peter Murrell, have been arrested and questioned as suspects in the police investigation into major fraud. Both were released without charge, but that's just the very least of her problems. There's the fraud, there's the murder potentially, there's the misuse of data. There's the corruption of, uh, uh, sorry, the um, conspiracy to pervert the course of justice. There's the destruction of evidence. There's so many different things going on. This woman is in deep, deep shit legally. 
They only have to make one stick and they'll get them for everything else. The research by Norstat, which recently acquired the polling firm Panelbase, found that her successor, Hamza Youssef, had a net trust score of minus 25, even worse than hers. Sawa scored minus 17 on the scale and UK boss Keir Starmer returned minus 24. So the most trusted politician in Scotland has a net trust of minus 17. It goes to show what the people of Scotland think about politicians. And I'm going to say that the people of Scotland, you are excellent judges of character. Rishi Sunak, the Prime Minister, <laughs> you don't want to know this one. Yeah, you do. Remind, remains deeply unpopular in Scotland with a trust score of minus 48. And Douglas Ross, the Scottish Conservative, minus 38. The Tories are not doing well in Scotland. The poll also found that the SNP was on course to return just 18 MPs at the next general election. We covered that yesterday. Labour strategists in Scotland are expecting to put the trust at the heart of their campaign. There will be voters who gave the SNP their vote in 2021, which was the last election, not because of independence or because they thought they were doing a good job, but because of the trust given them to govern Scotland. And this has been shattered in the last year. Well, of course it has. We've all seen the things that have come out. And of course, there's more revelations to come in the next few days. And Wednesday, of course, and set your alarm clocks, get your popcorn in. You won't want to miss Wednesday. That's when Nippy is under the grill at the, uh, at the inquiry. And you wonder how much she'll remember. Very little, I suspect. But it'll be fun to see her finding new and different ways of saying, I don't know, I can't remember. I wasn't there, that kind of thing. Big boy did it and ran away. Anyway, an SMB source said people trust her, Sturgeon, but it is one of the easiest things to lose and it's very difficult to rebuild. It will never be rebuilt. And it's very hard, of course, to rebuild trust when you're sitting on the inside of a jail cell for potentially 4,500 murders. I think the trust is gone and I don't think even she can make a political comeback after that. Which is good, I think. But they're all the same. But when... But, when the most trusted politician in Scotland is Anna Sawar, it goes to show how bad, how bad it is. And here's the thing, after all the revelations, after everything that's come out about Nippy, she's minus 18, he's minus 17. He is almost a Nippy, isn't he? He's almost a nippy. He's cranky light in terms of trust. He beats her by one. It's unbelievable. He probably hasn't killed anyone. Study revelation. <laughs> but what a fall. How the mighty have fallen. And there's much further to fall. Anyway, I shall round off there. I shall come up. Well, we will keep an eye Wednesday. We are not going to miss her on Wednesday. Uh, giving whatever dross and drivel will pour out of that gash of her mouth as she lies to the committee. They'll be very, very um, concerned. I think everyone will be going over every single word she says with a fine tooth comb and looking for the lies. It'll be interesting to see. Anyway, thank you very much for that. I'll come up, we'll round off this video and move on to the next one. But yeah, does do you trust her? Do you trust any of them? No. Coming up. It is refreshing to see that the good people of Scotland don't trust any politician. I mean, none of those people are trustworthy. And I'm glad to have played my part. It's all my, it's all my doing, of course. You mustn't take any credit. It's me constantly telling you what awful people they are. Um, no, of course not. Of course not. I'm not powerful enough for that. But I do reiterate and back up what the vast majority of you say. All politicians are worthless human beings. They're all scum. There's very few. There's very, very few politicians anywhere in the whole of Britain, that I've got any time for. There are a few. There are a few. Fairly enough, I like Fergus. Fergus Ewing, and he's SNP. I I like... Um, come on, Brain, you can do this. Joanne Cherry, she's SNP. I don't mind her either. But they're the exceptions, aren't they? They really are. For the SNP, they're more or less the exceptions. But, you know, there's um, Rosie Duffield in Labour. I quite like her. You know, there, there are a few... Obviously, in Scotland, you've got um, Dame Jackie Bailey. I, I quite like her. There's some that I have time for. 
Some I will listen to. Some I would even enjoy spending time in their company, I feel. But there are very, very few. Most of them are awful, awful people that you wouldn't want to hang around with. My next, my next door neighbour MP, as it were, um, Peter Bone, well, he was the one that was some touchy-feely, allegedly, with a, a young lad. Uh, had, uh, you know, possibly get, well, left his wife. He's now moved in with a woman who he worked with who's now going to run for the office that he's abandoning. So talk about keeping it in the family and incestuous. I think that's probably not going to work. But she's running for the Tories. It's a very Tory seat. And that'll be a very interesting election. But, you know, generally, generally, politicians are all, they're all scum. They're all scum. Never, never hold one up and put them on a plinth. It's the worst thing you can do. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Uh, we've done this one. I'll finish there. Move on. We've got loads more to do. So, uh, yeah, ciao. And until next time, stay safe, stay well. And I will speak to you later. Bye.